minister was going to preach this morning. So I had to get up here. I was up here last Sunday. I won't expect you to be up here this Sunday. And not only that, they told me to make it short. So, we try to do that. And I tell you, I thought I was the boss. <laughs> I guess I'm not. <laughs> All right. You see our scripture reference. But I need, let me see, I need Pastor Paulette to get 1 John 2.16. And I want you to hold on to that. That's 1 John. That's St. John, 1 John, John's epistle, 1 John, 2.16. Then I need Minister Pam to get Hebrews chapter 10. That's Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm going to need you to read verse 1 through 2. And then I'm going to need Pastor Brenda to get 1 John. That's John's epistle, not the gospel. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. <coughs> and starting with the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 6 through 13, it reads, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. Jesus. So I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Uh -huh. The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave you some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Romans chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Mm. And it reads, For if by the trespass of the one man, the man I just read about, death reigned through that one man, how much more would they, those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 consequently just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobediences of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Yes. Hebrews chapter 8, <coughs> beginning with verse 7, it reads, For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, 
The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother say and know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. I call this covenant new he made the first one obsolete. Thank you, Jesus. And what is obsolete in Asian will soon disappear. <coughs> I'd like to speak to you very briefly from this subject. Put your coat back on. Amen. Put your coat, coat back on. Amen. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Bill Marr. He does an HBO thing. And his problem is with Christianity is that he can accept a, 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 a talking snake. Mm. He can't believe in God because he can't believe that a snake could, could actually talk. But what we need to understand is, number one, we need to understand biblical symbology. Secondly, we need to understand that Things before the fall were different from things after the fall. Mm -hmm. Now, whether animals could talk, I don't know that. But I do know that the, the devil could possess animals. We have indication of that where when Jesus cast the demons on a legion and they asked if they could go into the swine, and Jesus permitted them to do so. Mm -hmm. And when the demons went into the swine, the swine in turn went and drowned themselves. Jesus. In other words, pigs got enough sense to not want to live a life full of demons, oh, but most people don't. Jesus. Jesus. Well, so we have an indication here that the, the devil actually and remember this also, that a serpent at that time before the fall was not this thing that crawled on the ground. It was a four-legged beast prior to the fall. As a result of the curse, because of what the serpent did, or the serpent allowed the enemy using it, it was cursed. And God said, from this day forth, you will crawl on your belly. So that was a result of the curse. Wasn't like that originally. So, and it does seem strange for a snake to be talking to a woman. <laughs> now, I can go somewhere with that, but since it's Mother's yeah. Day, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but what we see here, we see the account given concerning the fall of all the man. As a result of Adam's mistake and Eve's, and I know men like to say this was Eve's fault, mm -hmm. but I know it wasn't. It was man's fault because man was supposed to stay in place. Jesus. If, we wouldn't, if he had he stayed in place, all this so crazy mess would be going on today. Jesus, Jesus. But concerning this account, we see how man fell, and we see how this one man, Adam, Cause all men to all men to sin. Jesus. We all were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Every person after Adam, born in sin. Come on. When I came here, I was a sinner. I had done nothing wrong, but I was a sinner. Mm -hmm. To no fault of my own, I was Come a sinner. <coughs> and lots of Christians believe that. Through the one man, Adam, all have 
sin and come short of the glory of God and that because of Adam we all are sinners and there are many Christians who believe that. Mm. But there are many Christians who have a problem with when the one man Jesus when he came and went to Catholic to redeem us they can't believe that by the one man's obedience come on. all are made righteous now. Yeah. That's been a real problem with the church. And it's been a real problem with the church for a real long time. Ever since I uh, was beehive to a grape, I've been going to church. And the only thing I have been, hear, have been hearing over the years is about the law. How to live according to the law. Never knew anything about grace. Jesus. Was never taught grace. Never heard anything about grace. Out of all the churches I've been to. Nobody said anything about grace. Only thing I heard about grace was people say, you better stop doing this, that, and the other thing because God's grace will run out. And that's a shame. Because if we had to serve a God who ran out of grace, we would be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is, and you can't deny scripture, it's very clear here in Romans, and the book of Romans is a book that teaches the new covenant. We read about the new covenant in the book of Hebrews, but in the book of Romans, it really breaks down the new covenant. It talks about justification, sanctification. Mm -hmm. It talks about righteousness being a gift. Come and on. the only way you can become righteous as a Christian is to receive it by faith. Yeah, come on. You cannot become righteous by your works, by your efforts, yeah. by your willpower. You cannot become righteous. There's only one way you can become righteous and that is believing in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Accepting the total package of what he provided for us at Calvary. He didn't just die to give us fire insurance. He gave us the full package. Amen. He died that we may be righteous, that we may be sanctified, and that we can get to this level of living by merely believing in what he did. Amen. And that's what this gospel of grace is all about. And there are many Christians in the church right now they are disputing this thing. And I believe that the reason they are doing it is because they got a little pride going on. 1 John 2.16 let, let, Let's see what that says. 1 John 2.16 for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Isn't that something? Jesus. In other words, craving physical pleasure, pride, well, Craving everything we see, mm -hmm. everything we see, we want it. Oh, yeah. Pride in our accomplishments and our possessions. Oh, Jesus. That's what she just read. Teach it. And that's why I believe a lot of Christians today don't want to accept the truth Jesus. of what Jesus did because mm -hmm. it's a matter of pride. They want to be to pat themselves on the oh, back and yes. say, look at yes. what I did. Yes. They say, this is too easy. You can tell me all I have to do is believe and I can be made righteous. Come on. They say, that's too easy. Well, Jesus made that plain. He said, my yoke is easy mm -hmm. and my burden is light. <coughs> this thing ain't difficult. It's real simple. Yes. And all you have to do is believe it yes. and you will receive it. Yeah, but they won't accept it. Mm -hmm. And that's to their detriment. Jesus. But the Bible is clear that we can only become righteous mm -hmm. only by faith. by faith. When we accept the finished work of Jesus Christ, when we believe that he has made us righteous, mm -hmm. we are Justified by faith and the sanctification process begins Jesus. when we believe. Mm. Now, I'm 
I'm having to make some shortcuts since so y'all wanted me to hurry up. <laughs> we read in Romans chapter 5, 17 through 19, very clearly said, righteousness is a gift. You don't earn a gift. You accept it. It is given to you. Now, I don't know if these people who continue to fight against the gospel of grace, if they only have just certain scriptures they read out of their Bible, and apparently they don't read this one. And if they do read this one, then something is going on that we don't know about. They got some kind of problem. They, they're having a comprehension problem. Because it's very clear and very plain that from the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we all reign in light by the one Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How can you mess that up? When we look at, now this is a very good one right here. Let me hurry up. I'm going to bring it home. We're going to put our coat on and we leave. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 2. For since the law was merely a rude outline, foreshadowing of the good things to come, instead of fully expressing those things, it can never by offering the same sacrifices continually year after year make perfect those who approach its altar. <coughs> for it, for if it were otherwise, would these sacrifices not have stopped being offered? Mm. Since the worshippers had once for all been cleansed, they would no longer have any guilt or consciousness of sin. No guilt or consciousness of sin. In other words, we are not to have a sin consciousness. It is that sin consciousness that causes us to remain naked. When we believe that we are righteous and receive it by faith, this is when we put our coat on and we become righteous. And we are no longer naked and we don't have to sow fig leaves around us. And we walk in this truth and begin to grow in the grace of God. We experience newness of life. I've heard nearly everybody who come here so far say that since they've been under, hearing this gospel of grace, their lives have changed. Jesus. It is life changing when you learn the truth. Amen. When you stop Amen. walking in the law. Amen. And the Apostle Paul even said, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. They still think we're trying to give folks a license to sin. Jesus. We are not to have a sin consciousness. That means that you are not supposed to try to follow the law because when you follow the law, it's just going to give you a sin consciousness. Mm -hmm. But on last week, I told you what that leads to. Condemnation, shame, guilt, doubt, fear. This is how you will walk. You will be able to exercise faith in God because you will be walking in fear. You'll be walking in doubt. Amen. But on the other hand, when you believe that you are righteous and receive it by faith, Amen. it also Jesus. produces something. And I told you it produces Amen. justification, honor, innocence, trust, and faith. This Come is when you can please God. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible oh, so to please God. God. And Amen. when you Come put on. your coat on, Yes. And believe in the oh, finished yes. work of Jesus yes. Christ. This is when your life becomes pleasing to God. Yes. You cannot please God by dying every eye and crossing every T. My and God. talking about what you do and what you don't do. And what oh, you didn't do last Jesus. night and where you didn't go the other day. Come you on. cannot please God that way. The only way you can please God is through faith. Okay. Believing in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Believing what his son came here to do. And when you believe it, this is when your life changes. This is when you put your coat on because when you're walking around without your coat and you are naked, it's a very bad way to live. Very bad way to live. This new coming. Now, and I'm going to Read a scripture, Pastor Brenda, what you read that has just totally, wow, I mean, all through, for so many years, theologians have gotten mm -hmm. stuck on this scripture. Can't understand it. Read it, Pastor Brenda. Lord Jesus, whosoever 
is born of God, do not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Wow. Because he is born of God. <laughs> you see why that's that has baffled theologians. Yes. <laughs> it said anybody born of God cannot see it. Now don't put your hand up. How many of y'all sin yesterday or the day before? Don't put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> but you were born of God. But now the scripture says if you're born of God, you cannot see it. That's what it says. You know, see, that's why that has baffled theologians. And I tell you, it's baffled me, though. But you understand God's grace. You understand that scripture. That's good. God knows it is. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not even going to break it down because I don't have time. Got to get you mothers out of here. Tell you about that. So we have to teach the word. <laughs> <laughs> We're under a new covenant. We're not under the old covenant, the law. And under this new covenant, oh, Lord Jesus. we have new promises. Yes, come on, man. And mm -hmm. when you put your coat on, you can experience these promises. But you won't experience oh, them until you put your coat on. And when you believe that you are righteous by faith and put your coat back on, your life has to change, will change. Nothing can stop the change. Since we've been teaching this gospel of grace, I watched God. Let me, let me say this and then we'll go home. I watched God. 2009, our daycare got shut down. I went from making $7,500 a month to making $674 a month. That's a big drop. I had two mortgages, two car payments, credit cards, utilities, other bills. And all I was making was six hundred dollars. What about car payment? Six hundred dollars. And from two thousand nine to twenty ten, I can't tell you how we didn't lose anything. Nothing. And then in twenty ten, started making some money, but not quite enough. And then in 2011, I started making a whole lot of money. <coughs> but I watched God as he sustained us. My wife and I came together and we say, we're just going to trust God. We're going to believe God. We're going to make it through this thing. As a result of this, of course, my credit score, wow, it flipped over and around and down and out. <laughs> and my wife had been wanting a new house for, I don't know, a while, a while. But I'm thinking, man, I'm going to have to do some serious work to get my credit back. The other time, when I went over there to Toyota and the guy told me, he said, man, your credit is so powerful, you can get two brand new cars. I said, yeah, but would that credit pay for them? <laughs> Next thing I know, my credit was so bad, I couldn't even buy a go-kart. But my wife wanted a new house. Oh. And I said, wow, it's going to be hard to do. because. But I watched God. I watched God as he cleared my credit. I mean, just wiped everything out. Jesus. I got behind and stuff. I had liens and everything. Everything you name, I had. And I saw God. I saw God just wipe it out. Just wipe it out. I got letters to say that we're removing this from your credit file. I, I don't know why they did that. Other than it was God. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. I just sent them in the money. I didn't get it caught up. Jesus. But I watched God as he cleared up my credit. And then I was able to get a VA loan, a second VA loan, and put her in the house that she wanted. Amen. But I dare not take no credit for it. 